Hey -o. Here's the angry insane photographer back with another video. Um, this is going to be the DX series. Um, this is going to make you uh, happier than a dog in a hamburger factory, happier than a jihadi with a bomb strapped to his chest, happier than a hooker on crack. Um, now we're going to talk about the DX series. Someone put a gun to my head and said, listen asshole, you can have all the DX camera bodies that you want in the future, but you're only able to spend 1500 bucks on glass, i.e. lenses, for your camera, so you're going to have to make a choice. It's going to have to be 1500 bucks, and uh, this is going to be it, as I've said in the other videos, or if someone's only seen uh, this video uh, for the first time for my crazy ass. Um, I've owned every Nick War lens out there made in the past 30 years, uh, except for the 500 and the 600 800 millimeter, which of course costs as much as a brand new car essentially, but I have used them, but I have not personally purchased one because I really have no damn need for one. Worked in a few camera stores, graduate from the Southeast Center of Photographic Studies, a professional photographer for many years, but uh, as I've said before in other videos, unless you've seen those other videos, you know, separates out uh, an asshole with an expensive camera from a professional photographer are many things, but primarily a master of composition and an expert at light manipulation. A third thing, and uh, I've had a lot of people ask me questions that are actually are pro shooters, and I've seen their videos and I've seen their portfolios, and they are professionals, and I've even encountered this before in uh, photography school. Some of the uh, teachers there, you know, they've only owned 20 or 30 lenses and uh, they don't have a broad spectrum of experience and sometimes they discover or hear about a new lens and, you know, it's good to hear from somebody that, uh, you know, has owned them all and of course all opinions are subjective and, you know, all opinions are like assholes, each one is equal and each one is valid and of course they all stink, but speaking from a purely subjective premise as far as what's good stuff, you know, what's crap, what's fuzzy, what's no good, what's useful, what if you buy it's going to sit there and collect dust and is basically, you know, a piss away of your money. I'm going to give you this and uh, hopefully if you find it useful, uh, you know, I'm trying to save you money and trying to save you time because picking out lenses for most people, including professionals, you know, oddly enough, I've encountered a lot of professionals, and some of them are just amazing portfolios, and they've only ever used three or four lenses, and they really haven't tried anything else, and they produce excellent results, you know, with a few lenses, kind of like, uh, I don't know, kind of like uh, someone had a two-inch pecker, and that's all they got to work with, you know, they do the best with what they've got, but they've got no experience, <laughs> they've got no experience <laughs> with better gear, <laughs> Honey, this guy's crazy. Come watch this video. He's fucking insane. <laughs> um, so, yeah, picking out lenses is uh, as confusing as a chameleon in a giant bowl full of multicolored Skittles. So let's get to it. Someone's got a gun to my head and said, Look at asshole, you got a, a DX camera. Here we have the super awesome D7100, which I've got three of. Yeah, don't ask me why I've got three of them. And you only got 1500 bucks to spend on glass. Get to it, you fucking lip-flapping asshole, meaning myself. Whoa, it's okay, so what should we buy? Unquestionably, I've got a rack here. That's 1500 bucks. It's going to make me happy for the rest of my life, assuming I don't break it, but that's what insurance is for, asshole. Get insurance on your expensive shit because you're going to drop it. Especially on your camera, like fat glass like this. At least that's what I used to call it. We used to call it back in photography school, the real heavy shit. They'll actually pull the bayonet mount on your camera fucking off. Strip the threads that we call this shit fat glass. Let's start at the right with the expensive stuff. I recently got asked the question, you know, why didn't you talk about the AFS instead of the AFD? Well, the AFS isn't made anymore for a reason. About equal optics, but uh, it's also a lot more expensive. It's an inferior lens. Um, this is still made for a reason. A lot of people think this is a discontinued lens. It's not. It's still a current lens. It's $1,200 new. You can grab them for $500 all day long. That's the 80 to 200 D lens. It's a Nikkor. It is just the fucking cat's ass. It is the Tamron with VR. A quieter lens, a faster lens. A uh, better lens. Yeah, it's $1,500 new. You can't find them used, but this is what I recommend. I got two of these. Not the AFS, but the AFD 80-200 2.8D Nikkor. You can grab this all day long. Used typically for 500 bucks. It's awesome. It's the cast ass. Um, there's not much more to say about it than that. 
Do not recommend the AFS, recommend the AFD. The AFS was inferior in construction, too much plastic, broke too easy. There's only one fragile part of the AFD lens, and that is your manual slash automatic ring here. A lot of people in the heat of shooting will forget to press in this button to switch between manual and automatic if they want to take like a portrait shot of manual. And uh, you just got to be wary of that. So unless you're a stupid asshole and you forget to press that button in, you know, you can still tweak it without the button being pressed in. People will actually crank on it and what they'll do is they'll strip that, but it's actually easy to fix yourself. There's a lot of online videos on there. You'll say, well, it doesn't have vibration reduction. Well, so what? Back when I was in photography school, I'm going to sound like an old fart now, even though I'm only 42. We had these neat little fucking things called tripods and monopods. If you got any fucking skills, you do not need vibration reduction, okay? So shut the fuck up. Here we go. Next lens. If you only got one lens to pack around, you're going to take a trip and the space is limited. It would unquestionably be, this has vibration reduction by the way, this is the 18-200 3556DX. Yes, that really goes out there. That's a nice little phallic lens for you. Anyway, perfect lens, sharp across the board. Very slightly fuzzy at 200. It's not a genuine 200, it's more like 185. Uh, so remember you have to be thinking about what your DX uh, crop sensor uh, focal length is going to be, always the case, but this is a DX lens, it's the 18-200, it's a perfect one lens only pack around, or if you're on a trip you only pack one lens or two lens or just one lens, you only have enough space for one lens, obviously it would unquestionably be this, it would be the Swiss Army knife of DX lenses, you can typically find this for two, two and a quarter used off of eBay, new, they're uh, $600. Awesome lens, there's nothing bad to say about it technically refer to those as super zooms. Some people ask me why I'm covered in tattoos. Well, a friend of mine that I grew up with was a famous tattoo artist and uh, he was dying of cancer so I had him ink the shit out of me. So yes, I have a $24,000 bodysuit. My entire body, legs, arms, back, chest, everything. You know, I've got $25,000, dollars of the tattoos. Yeah, I'm fucking crazy. I'm also pretty smart, believe it or not. Translate ancient Greek and poly, but I'm not here to impress you. I'm trying to save you some fucking money because I've got a lot of experience with lenses. Not a lot, but a tremendous amount. Next would be either the 10 to 24 or 12 to 24. This is a 10 to 24, but I do not recommend it. The 12 to 24, which I don't have here. It's actually, I do have the lens. It's in my bag. It's buried deep in my bag. I said, fuck it. I'll just bring out the 10 to 22. But I'm showing you the 10 to 22, but what I'm recommending recommending for the same price used is the 12 to 24. Everybody's got to have a wide zoom. No ifs, ands, or buts. You don't need vibration reduction on wide zooms. You just don't. I don't give a shit what anybody fucking says. You just don't need it, okay? Same reason you don't need it on a fisheye, nor does it exist on a fisheye. Can't really be done, actually. Um, that's a 10 to 24. I recommend not this lens, but its cousin, the superior and the earlier version to this, the 12 to 24. This one's a bit fuzzy between 10 and 10 and 12. It's slightly inferior lens to the 12 to 24. So I'm recommending the 12 to 24. It's the exact same size, exact same shape as this. This one's made in China. The other one's made in Japan. So the 12 to 24, you can grab it for four. This is uh, along with the 18, uh, the 80 to 200, the two most expensive lenses. 500 used, 400 dollars used all day long on the 12 to 24. Okay, so we got 500 dollars, 200, and 400. Okay, next we go to the mini, much talked about lens by myself, uh, the lens for which I am a whore thereof. Now the only reason I'm recommending the 3.5 uh, instead of the 2.8 is that this is a $100 lens and the 2.8 is a $150 lens. Since we're trying to keep it at the $1,500 mark, I'm recommending the 135mm 3.5 version instead of the 2.8 version. Uh, this lens is king shit. It's top three or four lenses you must own. If you don't own it, you're just a fucking idiot or you're just an armchair photographer, which most people are. I'm not dishing an armchair photographer. You know, most people are working their ass off, trying to get laid or paid, and you know, photography is just an afterthought. But anyway, if you're gonna own any, if you're gonna own two or three or four lenses, you have to own this. Like I said, it's only a hundred bucks, typically used minty condition. It's just the fucking shit. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to remember on APS-C or DX mode, you're talking generally an equivalent roughly to 200 millimeters at 3.5. Not the best portrait lens on DX because 
of what the equivalent focal length is, but still a perfect uh, focal length. And I'll make another video talking about this. I can't stand iron faces. If people, a lot of people use the 7200, and if any variety, any manufacturer, 8200, 7200, Nikkor, or the 7200 Tamron, I fucking hate portrait lenses at that focal length. Um, the far superior choice if you're going to use the 8200 or 7200 for portraits is fuck that, do not do that, use this lens, which is roughly equivalent to 200 millimeter at 3.5, and what happens is your portraits do not end up with an iron face. It looks like someone has ironed all the details and depth of field out of the faces. I cannot stand that. It is um, nasty across the board um, on portraits out of the 80 to 200 or 70 to 200. Doesn't matter if it's a Tamron, doesn't matter if it's a Nikkor. Don't like long telly portraits of what it does to the person's face. You know, it looks like someone flattened their face. It's just low contrast, uh, bad depth of field. It just looks kind of shitty. People like it and they're used to it, but I mean, it's like saying a poor person that only eats rice is fucking used to it. Okay, just because you're used to it doesn't mean it's good. It means you're fucking used to it. Oh! God, I wish people would stop taking portraits. With tele zooms, use a fucking prime lens, okay? Ah! Like a 180 millimeter 2.8. If you want to do that, like I don't have it here, but like a 180 millimeter 2.8 Nikkor, which you can grab all day long for $300. Don't use this for portraits. Use 180 millimeter or this 135, which is roughly equivalent of 200 millimeter for uh, uh, tele. Uh, for a tele portrait lens. Next is the quad purpose a 60 millimeter prime AF Nikkor. Do not get the D version. I mean, do not get the G version. This is the D version. You want this, the D version, um, for your. Uh, like I said, the quad purpose is a perfect, basically an 85 millimeter rough equivalent perfect portrait lens on a DX. It's also a great macro lens. I would have included the Keenan setup. I'm a, I'm a huge whore for shooting macro, but you might not be. I'm talking about the general photographers. They only got 1500 bucks to spend on glass. Would I have included a 100mm Tekina in this? Yes, I would, but I'm only limited by 1500 bucks, which is the premise of this video. So, we still have a macro lens here, preferably a 60mm, so it's too short for macro, but it's perfect for any desktop or tabletop work. Most people aren't shooting moving bugs and critters outdoors, but you gotta have a macro lens. The second purpose of this lens is, uh, as I've stated, it's an awesome, just fucking cat's ass portrait lens, roughly 85mm equivalent, not exactly, but superior optics don't let the fact that it lacks a great deal of glass in this hollow, uh, Lens barrel confuse you. It actually is a rather heavy lens. It's actually quite heavy. Um, a third purpose is perfect reproduction. Perfect reproduction lens. Uh, this to me is the perfect normal lens on a DX. Instead of the 35mm, this to me is the perfect normal lens. I'd rather pack this around everywhere because of the quad purpose that it serves instead of uh, the 35mm uh, 35 millimeter prime. So you got a quad purpose lens here, especially on a DX. A great macro lens, great uh, perfect reproduction lens for art or whatever you use you want to reproduce without any distortion. It's fast, it's incredibly sharp. You know, you've got a macro lens, you've got a portrait lens, you've got a great normal lens. Um, I made an entire video about this lens alone. I think I made two of them already. So there's no need to hash over that again. $200 used all day long, get it unquestionably it's just the fucking bomb it's awesome it's incredible it's finer than a, uh, a hooker with double vision that confuses ten dollar bills for hundred dollar bills yeah I'm a little bit crude so sorry about that um, 35 millimeter um, I would not really recommend I don't use this lens much let me say not recommend this. this is better on an FX camera than it is on a DX because it's a perfect wide on a excuse me not not that not this 35 but the normal 35, uh, excuse me, I was referring to a 35mm D. Use this as a uh, APS-C crop mode on a FX camera because it's such a superior lens. Uh, I got a 35mm D use, to use on my FX camera. I also use this pack around if I've got weight constrictions. I only pack two lenses around on my FX. This is typically one of them because it's so small. And I stick uh, my FX camera in APS-C crop sensor mode. It's 35mm 1.8. G lens made in China. It does have a metal bayonet ring on the back. Um, everybody will agree that this lens is only $200. Nikon actually doesn't make any money off of this lens. They produce it slightly above cost because it's uh, 
they're quintessential, uh, you know, cookies and milk, you know, bread and bread and butter lens for their DX cameras. That's why it's uh, such an incredible lens and so insanely cheap. You can find them used all day long. I basically had fourteen hundred dollars here, but I had to throw in another hundred dollars and I had to ask myself. And trust me, I put a lot of thought into this video. You know, what am I going to put in here that's going to be the best shot for the hundred bucks I've got left? If I'm only got, if I got a gun to my head and I say I got to spend fifteen hundred bucks, that's all I can spend on my lenses. Where am I going to throw the hundred dollars? It's going to be this thirty-five millimeter prime. Okay, it is. I thought about the 55mm manual AI lens, but no, it is unquestionably the 35mm prime. You can grab this for $100 used all day long, so let's go down the line again. 500 bucks, two, two and a quarter. $400, remember the 12 to 24. $100 all day long on the 135mm 35. $200 used, perfect condition all day long. You must, must own this lens. 60 millimeter and hundred dollars used all day long. So here we have with tax 15 50 uh, 15 uh, 1500 dollars or fifteen hundred and fifty dollars say plus or minus fifty bucks depending on who you snag it from and the condition now that would be your choice what I'm picking for you if I was a amateur or uh, advanced amateur this is what I'll be picking now I'm going to sh make a one replacement and show you what my pick would be if I had a gun to my head and was forced to only have fifteen hundred dollars of the glass for my DX camera I'm going to remove the 80 to 200 and I'm going to replace it with these two lovely bastards here here we go the uh, told you before this is also an FX lens. This is 70 to 300, 4556. Five, incredibly fast, incredibly quiet. Perfect lens to have for your DX camera. Perfect. It's fast, it's quiet, it's awesome across the range, even up to 300, all the way down to 5.6 at 300 millimeters. Vibration reduction. Do not get the non VR version of this. You can find obviously far cheaper versions of this than non VR. Do not get it. Okay. Now the cost of these two lenses is going to be the same cost as the used 80 to 200. So that's 300 bucks all day long, typically a hair cheaper. Find these for two, two and a quarter, sometimes typically 250. That would be your 10.5 millimeter 2.8 DX ED Nikkor fisheye. Okay, also perfect for FX camera. There's no reason to buy a 16 millimeter FX fisheye because you can just throw this. When it comes to fisheyes, you do not need the awesomeness of the overpriced and hideously expensive 16 millimeter FX if you get an FX camera. All you need is a 10.5 and throw your FX camera into APS-C crop sensor mode and use your 10.5 millimeter DX fisheye. So that would be my replacement, what I would choose. The first series is what I would choose for you or any other advanced amateur. This would be my choice to replace the 80 to 200 because I'm not a sports photographer, although I've done plenty of it including for the newspaper, but that was back long ago. Long, long ago, back in Daytona Beach. I would replace it with the 70 to 300 for $300 and another two, two and a quarter for the 10.5 millimeter fisheye. So here we have $1,500 worth of glass. This is all I get. All I get uh, for my entire life for my DX camera. It's 1500 bucks. Now, if you sometime in the future plan to scratch up, you'll see I got an FX lens on this D7100 back here. If you plan on scratching up an additional $250, $300, you'll see I got an FX lens on here, the infamous 24, let me show you here, the infamous uh, 24 85 millimeter ED with a VR, excellent lens, tack sharp, the cat's ass. It's kind of the lens I pack around everywhere, however, I typically pack around also at 12 to 24. Uh, wide zoom, um, one of the two, if not both. Um, depends on which room I got, what I got. Um, now I'm gonna do a little addition here and say, well, what do I have here that uh, if I could only have two lenses here, just forgetting about everything else that you must, must get. You know, there's just no ifs, ands, or but. Fuck it, you gotta buy it. Period. Idiot. You don't own it. You're a moron. Okay, here we go. One thirty-five, three five. Also in 2.8, which is a little bit more expensive, and the 60 millimeter because this lens serves a quad purpose. I've only got one tiny little lens to back around all day long. It's going to be it because I love macro work. I'm a whore for macro, although this is a hair too short for macro. Ultimate shortest distance for macro should be about 100 millimeters, which is why I recommend the Takina. That's not the only reason I recommend the Takina 100 millimeter 2.8, but 
perfect reproduction, perfect portrait lens on a DX, perfect prime, perfect normal lens to me. So you got a quad purpose lens here for your DX camera. So these are the two lenses you got to buy, no ifs, ands, or buts. Third one would be the 35mm for DX. So if you like this video, you can either uh, you, know, you can send me a couple bucks via PayPal. You don't have to do anything, obviously. You can send me a message, tell me to go fuck myself, you think I'm full of shit, or whatever you want. It's all good. Tell me to go screw myself. You can send me two dollars via PayPal, whatever the hell you want. Don't send me anything. You can flip me the bird. You can leave me negative feedback. Whatever you want. It's all good. I'm trying to save you money. Unquestionably, I do have an extremely broad um, spectrum of experience with lenses. They're actually the broadest I've ever known. Um, except for a few people um, that actually been in the camera business I used to work with, you know, for 40 years, and they've owned and used everything, I you know, a hundred times. But one of those persons is dead now, and the other one is uh, I don't know what the hell happened, happened to him. But you know, there are very few people out there like that, and there's no videos out there like that on YouTube. So that's why I made these videos. So you know, I'm so sick, as I've told you before in other videos, some asshole. You know, that's only owned three or four lenses. Oh, this is the best lens in the world. I just fucking love it, and it's awesome. It takes great pictures, you know? And, you know, it's a shitty lens, and they've only owned every three. You know, don't make a video like that. Shut the fuck up. Please. It's like a person that's only ever eaten rice and beans. Well, I love rice, and beans are awesome, and, you know, they can't be anything better because I live in a prison, and that's what they feed me. They give me once bread once in a while, and I eat water, and... Like, oh, your limited spectrum of experience is appalling. You know, keep it to yourself. Don't recommend other people eat shit just because that's all you've ever eaten. It's rice and beans. Ah! Don't make a lens recommendation when you've only ever owned three or four lenses. You know, it's good. You mean well. You know, Hitler meant well. Hitler meant well, okay? In his own mind. And that's the same way these other videos are. Zeke Heil! No, I'm not a Nazi. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Hitler. Hitler meant well, but obviously something else is obviously the case. And I'm not comparing other lens assholes to that. That's kind of what they are. You know, they've uh, owned three or four lenses. They mean well when they make the videos, but ultimately the videos are meaningless, irrelevant bullshit that are not only productive, but typically counterproductive. I own this lens because that's what the sta the camera store clerk told me I should buy, and I just think it's awesome. It takes great pictures of my dog and my baby and my naked wife. Oh, shit. Shut the fuck up! I don't want to see videos like that. Oh! Life is too short for shit videos. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm not really angry. I'm more frustrated than anything. No, maybe I'm angry. I'm not that angry. Whatever. Anyway, I'm trying to save you a few bucks, give you a good recommendation. Like it, don't like it. It's an honest appraisal, and I'm actually trying to be helpful. Whatever you think of me, you can tell me to go fuck myself. I'm a good person, bad person. Whatever. I'm trying to help you. Um, send me any other video requests you got, and I will try to do them for you. Okay, great. Awesome. Later.